So today we will start with the shark. Now see, just a minute. Huh? When we talk about the shark, so the scientific name is the scoliodon. So what is the origin? So origin when we talk about, so there are lot many uh, fishes of shark are there. Now see, first of all, we will be talking about its general physiology. So we all know that it belongs to uh, which superclass? Can anyone tell me? Yes. What is the super class of fish? Any fish. Pisces, no? We have learned lot many classification, super class, then class. So in that we all have seen that there are two, two subclass, elasmobranchi, then osteostis. So when uh, that classification we will talk later. So these are the cold-blooded vertebrates. They breathe by the mean of gills and they live into the water. So there are a lot many different variety of the uh, Sharna. So let us talk about its systemic position. Now when we talk about the systematic position, phylum chordata. Can anyone give me the reason of keeping any animal into the phylum chordata? That three basic reason which I have told that you have to remember. Come on fast. Phylum chordata, what three reasons should be there for an animal to be a chordate? Fast. Presence of three features. Fast, come on. Please unmute and tell. I cannot see your chat screen. Presence of notochord. No. Yeah, please, uh, Nasir, can you tell? Presence of the notochord, presence of yes, presence of the gill slits and the nerve cord. Huh? Yes, subphylum vertebrata means. Now this phylum chordata, it is having uh, subphylum also. We have seen urochordata, cephalochordata right and uh, vertebrata so when we talk about the vertebrata so in the case of the vertebrate the notochord uh, is and nerve cord they are having the special uh, covering or you can say they are protected under the vertebrata now see there are two division uh, gnathostomata or gnathostomata so when we talk about the stomata stomata is the opening so here we will be considering the mouth so gnathostomata that the mouth they have the true jaws in their mouth understood now super class is the pieces uh, then their class is the chondrichthys chondrichthys is also called as the elasmobranchi now we all have seen that the super class pieces this is having again two classes under it that is one is the chondrichthys and another is the osteostis chondrichthys are the cartilaginous species and osteostis are the fishes which is having the bony endoskeleton chondrichthys are also called as elasmobranchi then when we talk about the subclass it belongs to the silachi their order is the <coughs> squaliforms then their family is trachinidae and genus is colidon now see here species again has taken but we all have seen for this particular example the species is taken as the seracova but here more than three to four thousand species of shark are present now when we talk about its habit and habitat so uh, like more sharks it is marine it is found in all part of the open sea indian pacific and atlantic ocean it is carnivorous feeding on crabs lobster worms and fishes it is the fastest swimmer as the body is perfectly streamlined without having any rigid projection because see this rigid projection causes the hurdle into the water current and it alters the swimming do you know about the shark that the shark is having such a good uh, this uh, smelling sense that in a kilometer if there is a blood they can swim at the very fast rate and they can reach at that particular site 
now uh, when we talk about the sexes so the sexes of the animal are separated now fertilization is internal and development is direct now when we talk about the internal fertilization that means that the gametes are fertilizing the inside uh, of the body not the medium understand and direct development we all have seen that the development is of two type one is the direct development another is the metamorphosis so here they show the direct development now it is viviparous viviparous uh, means that they are protecting their young ones developing baby inside their uteri the distribution of the shark is they are widely distributed it has been recorded from the zanzibar to the sri lanka and sri lanka to malay archipelago indian ocean from bay of bengal to the east indies and philippine island from mexico to panama and the east pacific so overall you can see that it is widely distributed and it is present throughout economic importance they are predaceous carnivorous feeds on the lobster crabs and fish poor people living along the sea coast they eat the dog fish its flesh is not that delicious but it is highly nutritious and when you uh, cut open the uh, species you will find that the quantity of flesh is little less as compared to the waste so uh, that's why it is not preferable as a fish food and uh, but if you will see the nutrition wise it is highly nutrition its skin is <coughs> is called as a shagreen it is used in abrasive for the polishing furniture etc now if you will see the skin of the shark so it is having the small placoid still uh, scales which are arranged uh, in a single direction so for that it is giving a rough surface like structure so that's why it is used as an abrasive for the polishing furniture etc it is used for dissection into the laboratories of the college and universities but in our university university of mumbai the uh, dissection of the shark is banned now let us see the external feature of the shark when we see uh, the external feature basically we focus on its shape size and the color so when we uh, talk about their body so their body it has a long laterally compressed spindle shaped body which tapers at both the end if you will see the diagram you will find that here also it is getting narrowed out and as well as this side also so body is tapering means it is narrowing at both the end the full grown specimen measures from 30 to 60 cm into the length when we observe the color so body is dark gray above the pale region uh, while you will see the beneath region that is white now see what happen when you will see from the uh, surface of the water you will find a dark so it is some where it is helping as a camouflage and they can hide themselves from the predator as well as uh they can hide themselves or their appearance from their prey also so from up if you will see this dark gray color it just look like that yeah there is some uh, type of a stone or something and from beneath if you will see white background it gives a bit camouflage so uh, really their color is very helpful for their survival and it enhances their predatory activity body surface is rough due to the backwardly directed spines of placoid scale now see they have the special placoid scales which is present in a single direction and these are embedded in the dermis their body is divisible into the head trunk and tail there is no distinct boundaries between this region this is not like that yes this is the head region this is that although the body you will see that all these three regions they are uh, not demarked but yes still the body of all vertebrate we will have seen is divided into the three part that is head trunk and tail head is strongly compressed dorsoventrally and it is produced in front 
into the wedge shape snout or rostrum then when we talk about its trunk so it is almost elliptical in transverse section its thickest part is lying in front of the middle of the body trunk is gradually tapers behind the tail tail is laterally compressed and bend upward the small angle fringe with the caudal fin so we will have seen that the tail in the case of the fish is of various type homo circle hetero circle and uh, the semi circle so here in the case of the uh, shark the tail is hetero circle hetero circle means can anyone tell me see it is something like this one part is larger hetero matlab it's something like this one side is small angle and it is uh, the caudal fin one side will be small and other is the big so such tail is called as the hetero circle now when we talk about the fins so here like all fish they are also having two sides of the fin which are flattened expansion of the skin which is supported by the cartilaginous rock and horny fins so these are the unpaired or median fins and paired lateral fin see median fin it is really very important that is also called as the dorsal fin because it is present on the dorsal side of the body so this is unpaired that means it is only single and this is really very important for uh, the swimming understand and they also have the paired lateral fins now when we talk about their median fins so two dorsal fin and ventral or anal fin is present the first dorsal fin is larger and triangular in shape it is situated in front of the middle of the body and that is also having a basal lobe when we talk about the second dorsal fin it is also triangular in outline but it is very small and it is situated midway between the first and the tip of the tail when we talk about their caudal fin so it is extended along the dorsal and the ventral surface of the tail which is present into the median line and forms the dorsal and the ventral lobe when we talk about their lateral lateral means which is present into the lateral side of the body that means the surface lateral surface now when we are seeing the fish so the this side two side are the lateral side so definitely lateral fins are the fins which are present on the lateral side of the body they are the pad pectoral pectoral region just we have the shoulder region that is called as a pectoral region pelvic fins large pectoral fins originated from the ventral lateral margin of the body immediately behind the gills and when we talk about their pelvic fins so these are very much smaller than the pectoral fin which arises close together from the ventral surface now see their pelvic fins they are present at the junction of the trunk and tail when we talk about the male scolyodon there is still uh, modification is observed in the case of the pelvic fin that is modified to form the strip log uh, rod like clasper now see this clasper is the reproductive organ that means it helps into the intromittent organ this is used during the population and it helps to uh, we all have learned na, that in the case of the shark the fertilization is internal so for the internal fertilization the gamete should unite inside the body of the female so this clasper helps to transfer the sperm inside the body of the female <coughs> you can see like this these are the pectoral fins and these are the pelvic fin understood so let us go ahead just to